defeated the enemy, two of them. You go to loot and the third, who didn't make any sound, kills you from behind. Familiar situation, isn't it? Or when your whole team is killed and you are left 1v1 with an enemy, your hands sweat, you want to run away, but you need to avenge your teammates. So, how do you improve your solo game? I've already spent 7500 hours in Tarkov, more than half of which I play solo. In this video, I'll give you 5 tips on what to focus on to improve your solo game. The first and most important issue is fear. You think that since you are alone, the game isn't fair. You have no one to rely on, and the enemies may well have numerical superiority. Yes, it's true. Overwhelming with the numbers is indeed easier. But it only works if there's clear info on you. For the enemy team, you are thrown in their side. They don't know where to flank you, where and how to pick to avoid being instantly pinned down. Down. Realize this. In 90% of cases, you'll encounter not an esports team, but a bunch of guys who play together maybe a couple dozen games, which is not enough for a truly cohesive game. They'll reveal their position more carelessly, underestimating you until you start killing them. Understand that your chances of winning aren't as slim as you think. Next, you need to develop an important habit. What do you need to do to improve your skills in something? Right, regularly perform the action you want to perfect. You can't learn to play solo by constantly running in parties. Start small, walk the scale, not for farming, but for fighting. Confrontation with even one enemy will be a full-fledged challenge for you. The weapon is terrible, the ammo too, instead of armor, a crappy leaf and the grandma's woolen shelves serves as a helmet, so you gain experience fighting solo without risking your gear. A better option is to play in as a PMC. Yes, there's a fear of losing loot here. To minimize it, gear up as cheaply as possible, but literally. Exchange ammo for two cans of energy, you don't need a helmet. Get a rig from fans for a couple of thousand and the barcode backpack will be enough for you. Weapon, either a cater or a clean. And head to the factory. Set a goal to kill 100 PMCs. Prepare about 10 such sets in advance, and when your teammate goes to eat mommy's cookies or visit their meeting room, instead of watching another video with cute cats or farming balls on scab, run to the factory. And another tip for overcoming fear is to learn to farm anyway. For scab, for PMC, it doesn't matter. I made videos about farming. The main thing for you to understand is that money is a resource that is very easy easy to replenish. The second tip is about sound. Let's be honest. When you don't understand where the enemy is coming from, how far away they are, and even getting information about how many people they are, is not your fault. It's the game's fault. Sound is the most broken part of it. Of course, equalizers, using expensive headsets, sound cards can slightly improve the overall understanding of what is going on. But how come you don't understand anything, and the person who has played much more hours than you becomes a predator to you, knowing your position precisely. Let's keep jokes about cheaters. Two things distinguish you. First, his playing volume is much higher, and the second, he knows where each material is located on the map. About the volume. I think many of you in my video about sound didn't hear anything when I showed what action produces a certain sound at a certain distance. And that's precisely because their volume becomes extremely quiet as it increases. And to hear without going deep, first of all, don't use Gesesha, because they hardly reduce atmospheric sounds. Secondly, turn down the interface and music sounds to a minimum and make your teammate in Discord quieter. In the game itself, find the optimal volume to hear how your teammate is aiming at extreme distances where the sound almost disappears, but it's still there. All that's left is to get used to it, and you won't miss a single rustle. Regarding materials, let's consider this already at the third tip – knowing the location. Making decisions on the fly during the raid should be based on many factors, such as a general understanding of detours, dark wax, strong and weak 
Angles, but sound also plays a huge role here. Let me give you a familiar example. You are sitting in a dormitory and hear someone running on metal. You always know that someone is rushing you via the metal staircase. And you are ready. Similarly, being on a large construction site. Hearing metal footsteps, you understand that the enemy is not only the second floor, but even more, you understand from which side. And if it's wood, then he's also on the same floor, but in different part. If you hear wood approaching the library, it means someone is definitely in the library itself. Sometimes, even by the sound of a jump, you can perfectly understand that a person is trying to get on the guy's roof or has taken up some position. So get used to paying attention to your death. What preceded them? Was there any jumping or running on some unusual materials? Moving further into the topic of understanding the location, you should think in such a way as to pre-plan two to three options for picking the opponent and at least one to retweet. Why is this necessary? When you unsuccessfully attack the opponent, he remembers where you picked from last time and already holds his crosshair at that level. All he needs to do to kill you on your next pick is simply moving his finger to the left mouse button. You, on the other hand, will need to pick and aim. Of course, situations vary, sometimes it will be advantageous to just come out with the pre fire or even through a grenade. But having several pick points at your disposal is very important, so that by alternating them. You don't let the opponent be already prepared for your actions. You should also pay attention to timings. If you often play in the same location, chances are you often spawn in the same place too. Try different variations of movement. If you see that appearing in the death corridor on the factory and running along the corridor immediately dying in the first minute of the raid, that it might be logical to take optics and wait for them to come out on their own. Another smart solution is to subscribe. There will be a lot of guys there. The fourth tip is to play off information. It's not about sitting on your butt until someone exposes themselves. It's about taking actions that will provoke the enemy to give you information. Jump across the corridor and turn your head toward the enemy in mid-air. Do this a couple of times and maybe you'll notice exactly where they are sitting by the traces that fly towards you. Step back far enough to have time to take out and hide a grenade, but not so far that you can't throw it in time. The player may think he can push you, but you'll meet them with gunfire. Just make sure not to mess up. And whatever you do, don't push your opponent without understanding where exactly he is. And the final fifth tip. Don't be afraid to retreat. Many think you need to fight like a lion to the last, regardless of how terrible the position you find yourself in is. This applies to both your literal position and the relevance of the fight. Let's say there's a party against you, we just sat on their butts and two comfortable angles didn't make a sound for 5 minutes and you have no grenades. What are the chances that you can practically blindly knock them out of position? By the way, this is my most common mistake. On Steams I need to show content, so I'll try to kill the party fight enemy to the last, who just won't do anything but sit still even if a grenade flies straight into his face. It would be much wiser to just leave this guy, giving him the opportunity to continue his sitting. Also, very often a good decision will be to leave the battlefield to come at it from a completely opposite direction. If behind you there's only open space and there's no way to outplay the situation, why the hell hold on to that point at all? It's better to go around in a circle. Yes, there's a chance you lose the enemy, but at least you'll create the element of surprise and you'll be playing on your field, not the opponents. I can give you thousands more tips, all you need to do is ask in the comments, like and subscribe. See you next time, bye bye!